So today I'm going to talk about whether high blood pressure can be lowered without taking medicines. And this is a common question that I am asked in clinical practice by my patients almost every day. So I thought we should address this with a, a very brief presentation on some simple steps that you can adopt to keep your blood pressure under control. Now, just bear in mind, please, that uh, if you do develop high blood pressure, that uh, you may require medications. And even though you may have wondered whether you can lower blood pressure without medicines, it may not be possible in all cases. I'm sure the question has crossed your mind if you've been diagnosed with that problem. And clearly, uh, that is a normal concern because a diagnosis of high blood pressure can be quite worrying. And many people begin to wonder how they ended up having high blood pressure in the first place, having taken every measure possible to keep themselves fit and healthy. Now, just a quick disclaimer, if you are diagnosed with high blood pressure, I do recommend strongly that you see your doctor for treatment advice. And uh, what I'm talking about here is just a simple guide, but I do advise you to see your uh, physician or your cardiologist for more information and management as well. So what has happened recently is the American Heart Association came out with a new definition for high blood pressure. So up until now, anyone who had a blood pressure of over 140 over 90 had high blood pressure. But now the definition of normal blood pressure is less than 120. That is a systolic or the upper number and a diastolic or the lower number of less than 80. Anything above 120 to 129 or between that value and anything less than 80 falls in the elevated category. The high blood pressure stage 1 is between 130 to 139 and 80 to 89. And anything above that becomes either stage 2 or a hypertensive crisis. So given this new definition, it is not uncommon for a lot of patients to come with a slightly higher blood pressure. But generally, physicians who are experienced and who have been managing hypertension over a number of years will carefully think whether medication is truly required or not based on their blood pressure reading. So why do we need to worry about hypertension? Well, hypertension is sometimes called a silent killer because very often patients don't get any sort of symptoms that they have high blood pressure and they may find it on a routine check either as a part of their health package or if they, a family member has a blood pressure measuring apparatus at home, they may find that their blood pressure is high. But in some individuals, when the blood pressure is rather elevated, they may develop certain symptoms such as chest pain, breathlessness, reduced urine output, and sometimes even giddiness. Generally, these symptoms are seen at very high blood pressures. Um, I previously mentioned about hypertension classification and hypertensive emergency is a condition where the blood pressure is above 180 systolic and over 120 diastolic. And in such a situation, if an individual is having what we call symptomatic hypertension, meaning they have high blood pressure with symptoms, then bringing the blood pressure down as soon as possible is essential. And this way, organ damage can be halted. But is medication always needed? Now, this is a perfectly normal question because a lot of people don't really like taking medication and many of them want to avoid it as far as possible. Now, generally, if an individual comes with low-grade hypertension, as in grade 1 hypertension, then in such a situation, it may not necessary, may not be necessary to take medications alone. But just uh, doing uh, or following lifestyle changes or dietary management, exercise, etc. can help. So this is what I'll be talking about over here. So the question, can blood pressure be lowered without medicines? Yes, of course it can. But it does depend upon what reading you actually have. And if it is very high, you will require medication. But if it is a grade one hypertension, you may not require medication. So the first step to bringing down the blood pressure is losing weight. Because being overweight is one of the most common risk factors in the development of hypertension. And it is also a risk factor in the development of heart disease. And some people have an associated condition called sleep apnea. And this is where they snore quite loudly at night and in between their snoring uh, episodes at night there are times when they stop breathing for a few seconds and this is a condition called as obstructive sleep apnea also called OSA and clinical studies have found that there is a close link between sleep apnea and high blood pressure and sleep apnea is generally seen in individuals who are overweight so there would indirectly be a link between overweight being overweight and having high blood pressure. So in one particular study, um, and I've included the link here at the bottom if you wish to look it up, 
uh, reducing weight by 4 kilograms, reduce systolic blood pressure by 4.5 millimeters of mercury, and diastolic blood pressure by 3 millimeters of mercury. Now, that may not seem like a big number, but in the grand scheme of things, you may be changing your status from a grade 1 hypertension to just elevated hypertension, or from elevated hypertension to having normal blood pressure just by reducing weight. So you can imagine by 4 kilograms, if there is such a weight loss, if you lose more, then it is very likely you would lose or lower your blood pressure even further. The next important thing is to lower your salt intake. Now, high salt intake is a well-known risk factor in the development of high blood pressure. And if you keep your salt intake low, you can lower blood pressure without medication. Now, it is currently recommended that no more than 4 grams of salt per day is consumed in your diet. And this is around 2.2 grams of sodium. Now, in India, there is a uh, common usage of other sol salts as well, rock salt, Himalaya Himalayan salt, or pink salt, what they call. And the thing with those is those also have some degree or some quantity of sodium in them, though they are higher in potassium. So while the guidelines are not very clear about that, then there are no strong recommendations. In my practice, I often advise people to avoid that as well, because try and keep the sodium as low as possible, and that will help lower the blood pressure. Now, in the US and um, all across the world these days, there is a, a quite a popular diet known as the DASH diet, which stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. And this talks about keeping the sodium intake low and increasing foods that are rich in potassium and magnesium and other salts, uh, as these do not affect the blood pressure. I have included a link in the uh, description of this video uh, on certain books that you can purchase on Amazon if you wish to read more about the DASH diet. So clinical studies have shown that reducing salt intake can lower blood pressure by around 2 to 8 millimeters of mercury. Once again, if you combine this with losing weight, then you can see that the blood pressure would come down quite remarkably. The next step is to exercise regularly and making sure that you exercise regularly can help you lower your blood pressure without requiring medication. But it has been found that if you stop exercise, then the blood pressure can go up once again. And this is the problem initially with the most patients who are diagnosed with high blood pressure as a large proportion of them begin exercising regularly and after a few months they find that life gets in the way or they have other important uh, uh, programs or activities etc that they need to do that they begin to forget or stop exercising completely and this doesn't really help them in the long term so if you're trying to lose uh, lower body weight uh, sorry lower your blood pressure by uh, doing exercise then you meet, need to be consistent and need to maintain it on a regular basis So studies have found that 30 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic exercise can lower the blood pressure by around 5 to 9 millimeters of mercury. So if you add up what we have done so far, you're looking at a blood pressure reduction of at least 15 millimeters of mercury so far. So you can see the benefit of just simple dietary changes and lifestyle modifications. Now, when it comes to alcohol, we do advise individuals or patients with high blood pressure to lower their alcohol intake and moderation is key. Now, there are many individuals who have been consuming a small amount of alcohol on a regular basis, and there are some, some studies that have found that moderate alcohol intake can reduce blood pressure by around 4 millimeters of mercury. It is only when you begin to consume more alcohol that your blood pressure will begin to increase. So I'm not suggesting that you go and take up alcohol in intake in moderation as a habit at all. If you don't take alcohol, please don't start straight. Now, it is not really worth uh, starting it as a habit in order to bring down your blood pressure, there are better ways and healthier ways to do that. Stopping smoking. Now, this is a slightly controversial topic when it comes to managing blood pressure. It has been found that every time an individual smokes a cigarette, there is a spike in their blood pressure immediately after they have finished their cigarette. However, it has also been found from clinical studies that people who smoke have a lower blood pressure than normal. And sometimes stopping smoking can increase blood pressure. So this makes it completely counterproductive. I mean, if you stop smoking, you would expect the blood pressure to remain under control. But in fact, studies have found that in smokers, stopping smoking increases the BP. But one should not concentrate just on the blood pressure alone in such situation because smoking has other effects on all vital structures and is a risk factor for heart attacks, strokes, and many other types of cancer. So we need to be very vigilant when it comes to smoking and its other effects and not just concentrate on just the effects that it has on blood pressure. So to summarize that point, stopping smoking may not help blood pressure much, but it will prevent heart attacks, strokes and cancer. 
Now, another point that might be quite interesting to know is cutting down the coffee. Now, coffee contains caffeine and caffeine has been shown to increase blood pressure in those individuals who consume it rarely. Now, whether or not it keeps the blood pressure high in those who consume high quantities, etc. is not very clear, but it is not recommended to consume too much coffee either way because blood pressure can go up to nearly the tune of 10 mm every time you have a cup of coffee. It is for this reason that we advise individuals who check their blood pressure at home to avoid caffeinated drinks for at least 30 minutes. I sometimes tell them up to an hour or so before checking their blood pressure at home because the values may be falsely elevated. Finally, managing stress is extremely important. We all lead stressful lives. I don't think there's a person in the world who has a stress-free life. And stress is a well-known factor in increasing blood pressure. Managing stress can be achieved through a number of methods. You could try yoga, exercise, meditation, breathing exercises, or just taking up a simple hobby that relaxes you. These sort of things can always help. And all just remember that you shouldn't hesitate to seek counseling if stress is really getting on top of you. Because many times that itself can help. Strategies to manage your stress can help bring down your blood pressure in the long in the long run. So to conclude, it's simple measures that can help lower your blood pressure without medicines. It's not really rocket science as such. I think these measures are applicable to a number of health conditions that we encounter. And just doing following these methods should be more than enough uh, to help bring down your blood pressure if it is mildly elevated. Now, if you'd like further information on this uh, topic, uh, click on the links below. I've also included some links to some books that you may want to read and some articles as well that you may want to uh, read for further information. Thank you.